Hello again, welcome to my class. My name is Teacher Hura, and in this video, we shall be learning about stoichiometry of chemical equations. Now, a lot of students find this term a little bit confusing, but all it means is very simple. You'll find that the meaning of stoichiometry is not something that you haven't learned before. The stoichio a chemical equation in which the reactants and products are in whole number ratios is called a stoichiometric equation. Now this kind of an equation is the same equation you have been writing all the time. So you should not be thinking that it's a different kind of an equation. It is exactly the same. Now in the topic of the mole, we shall be using these equations and those whole numbers that have been used to balance them are known as the mole ratios. So let us see with some few examples. In this first example, you're supposed to find the mass of oxygen that is required to react with magnesium to form 4 grams of magnesium oxide. Now this is a very simple equa a kind of a question, whereby the first thing you need to do is to write the chemical equation, or rather just the stoichiometric equation. So the same thing here. So now when magnesium reacts with oxygen, it forms magnesium oxide. Now, what you need to do with this equation is to make sure that you balance it. So first of all, I'll put down the state symbols. And then I balance the equation. Of course, you can see that you have two oxygen on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So we'll add a two right before magnesium oxide. And that changes magnesium and so we'll also add a 2 before magnesium. So now the next part is to now do the calculation. This equation is what is known as a stoichiometric equation because we have balanced using whole numbers. And if you don't have a number before an element or compound, then it means that the number there is 1. So let us look at the first step. The first step after this is to calculate the number of moles of magnesium oxide formed. So, so that one is all only easy to do when you're getting, we'll calculate by doing the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the relative formula mass. So the mass of magnesium is 4.0 and the relative formula mass of magnesium can be calculated. Now magnesium oxide is MgO so the relative formula mass is going to be the relative atomic mass of magnesium which is 24 and then you add the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. This gives us 40. So now we calculate the moles, which is going to be equal to the 4.0 divide 40. The 4.0 grams of magnesium that were formed. So this is going to give us 0 0.1 moles. So now that we have the number of moles of magnesium and these numbers here are the mole ratios so we can use the mole ratios to get the number of moles of oxygen. So here I'll put it like this. The mole ratio between magnesium oxide and oxygen is going to be the numbers that are there before this chemical equation. So the number before magnesium oxide is 2 and the number before oxygen is 1 because there is no number there. So it remains 1. Now the number of moles of magnesium oxide is 0 0.1 moles. And therefore we need to calculate the number of moles of oxygen. Now this is done quite easily by a cross multiplication. So we'll find 0 0.1 multiplied by 1 divided by 2. This gives us 0 0.05 moles. 
Now these are moles of oxygen. Now the next thing is to use this same formula for the same to calculate the mass of oxygen. So if you substitute and you'll get that the mass of oxygen would be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the relative molecular mass. Now I say relative molecular mass because oxygen is a molecular substance. Now here the next thing we do is just to calculate and have 0 0.05 multiplied by the relative molecular mass of oxygen is 16 by 2 so it's 32. This is going to give us 1.6 grams of oxygen gas. So that is how you calculate and it's quite easy. Now let us use another example and find out more. Now in this second example, you need to calculate the mass of copper formed when 8 grams of copper 2 oxide is completely reduced by carbon. And you've been given the relative atomic mass of copper is 64, that for oxygen is 16, and that for carbon is 12. Once again, the first thing we need to do is to write the equation. So you can see in this equation, you are reducing copper to oxide by carbon. So now, here what we'll be doing is that the carbon will remove this oxygen and we end up just with copper and it will form carbon for oxide gas. So that is the equation, but it is not yet balanced. So we need to make it a stoichiometric equation by balancing that equation. So here we'll have to check the number of oxygen here is 2 and this side is 1. We'll add a 2 there. Now the number of copper is 2 and we put a 2 there. So that is that simple. Then the next step now, it is to check. We have been given 8 grams of copper to oxide. So we have 8 grams right here. And we are required to find the mass of copper. So this is what we are looking for. Just like we did in the first example, these numbers right here are the mole ratios. And if we get the number of moles of copper to oxide, we can get the number of moles of copper. So that is how we do it. We go like this. So we'll say that the number of moles of copper 2 oxide. So that is going to be the mass divided by the relative formula mass. So as you can see, it's a quite simple way. So the mass of copper is 8. Copper 2 oxide is 8, then we need to calculate the RFM. So the RFM of copper 2 oxide is given by the relative atomic mass of copper, which is provided right here, which is 64. And then we add the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. This gives us 80. So now to calculate the moles, we'll have it as 8.0 divide 80 and this gives us 0 0.1 moles. Now that we have the number of moles of copper to oxide, then now we can use these numbers here, the mole ratios, the numbers before each of these compounds after you balance the equation. So the second part is to use the mole ratio now the one for copper to oxide and the one for copper metal. You find that it is two and a two, the numbers before them. So since this is the mole ratio, then you ask yourselves, if copper to oxide is 0 0.1 moles, so how many moles will that be for copper? So again, it's another cross multiplication, whereby you cross multiply 0 0.1 by two divide by two. This gives us 0 0.1 moles. Now that you have that number of moles, we can use the formula mass is equal to the number of moles times the relative atomic mass. And that is very easy to substitute, whereby we'll have the 0 0.1 times the relative atomic mass of copper. Now we're dealing with copper, which is 64. 
So that gives us 6.4 grams of copper metal. So that is how you calculate using the stoichiometric equations. These questions always just remember if you get the moles on one side, you can get the moles of any other product. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, please give it a thumbs up. And if it's the first time you're on this channel, subscribe so that you can always get new videos once I post them once you have turned on that notification bell. See you next time.